Okay, I'm gonna step out a little bit and hopefully I'm not out. Oh, look <laughs> at that. I can just go in the, in the slot there. There we go, perfect. I'm gonna, I'm gonna trash the place yet. <laughs> I hope I'm not stepping on anybody's toes. Nope. But uh, I'm gonna put you on the spot a little bit. Oh, okay. I got some exciting news this morning. Pam and Chloe bought a house. So I've already hey. said that we, our family has a little trailer that we'd be willing to help on July 14th. And I'm challenging everybody in the congregation to get in touch with pastor. We can organize a moving day. This way all Pam and Chloe have to do is push everybody out and empty the boxes. <laughs> so July 14th. Now where are you moving to? Okay, and oh. so you're moving from in town to in town? Yes. Oh, that's so simple. Come on, everybody step up. Let's get this done. It's just, just around the corner from us, too. Perfect. So. Yeah. Okay, so did anybody not hear it? Because I can repeat it all word for word again. <laughs> okay, good. Anyways, we're reading from 2 Corinthians, verses 3 three or chapter three one to six are we beginning to command ourselves again or do we need like some people letters of recommendation to you or from you you yourselves are our letter written on our hearts known and read by everybody you show that you are a letter from Christ the result of our ministry written not with ink but with the spirit of the living God not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of human hearts. Such confidence as this is ours through Christ before God. Not that we are competent in ourselves to claim anything for ourselves, but our competence comes from God. He has made us competent as ministers of a new covenant, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. Amen. Thank you, Mark. Just as Mark was reading, I'm noticing that the ambulance technicians are just walking in to the lobby, so just, just keep, uh, keep Corinne in prayer in the next few moments. We're going to, um, before we come around the table of the Lord, we're going to talk about what it means to be a living letter. Anyone who's ever searched for employment, you've looked for a job, you know the importance of having a letter of recommendation. And sometimes you might even need, it would be more beneficial to have several letters of recommendation because what a letter of recommendation tells about a person is who you are. It tells what you've done and it tells where you're going. And, and so when I took a keyboarding course several years ago, I was taught how to put together a proper resume and and I learned that a good employment resume contains several key elements, and some of those elements being uh, your personal employment history, your education history, your, your short-term goals, your long-term goals. You might even want to put some of your hobbies and your aspirations in there as well. But I think any resume would fall short if it didn't include at least three names of people who could vouch for your character, for your personality, who would be a reference for you. And even from our congregation here, I know that our boys, when they have applied for different jobs in different places, they have used some of the names of you guys, with your permission, of course, and they have put your names and your phone numbers right down on their resumes or their applications. And... Sometimes you might supply a letter of recommendation to a potential place of employment. You could attach it to your resume and hand it in as you go for an interview. And, and these letters, these references, they're essential because in addition to your resume, they provide first-hand information regarding the potential employee's character, his influence, his perseverance throughout his past work experience. It's a reference letter coming from someone who knows you and your work ethic. Their character might be dealt with 
like, like, like how they de- deal with stress, how a person deals with cl- conflict, how a person might deal with adversity, that might all be contained within the letter. And this is said and done by writing it down on paper in order to inform the potential employer that this person would be an asset to that company. Now these letters announce to a search committee or a manager that other people think very highly of you if you have a reference letter. They tell a potential employer that you are completely worthy of being hired for that job opening. And when I applied for work in Montreal, I got letters of recommendation and references from people that I knew when I was applying for, to places like Montreal Trust and, and other places there. And they don't usually approve references from family members. In fact, you're encouraged if you're going to make a reference letter or have a name on a resume, it it can't be from your mother or your father because they're going to be a little bit biased in saying exactly what they think of you. But I got letters from my pastor, from a board member, from people in our church who would vouch for me. And then while I was looking for a job while attending Bible college, I got letters of recommendation from previous employers to add to my resume when I was looking for employment in the Maritimes. And I brought these letters to potential employers. I realized that I may not find a full-time ministry position right away. And so I needed to be bivocational and work in a church, but also work outside of a church and earn some income for our family. And so I brought letters like these. You've all heard of the famous Domino's that I worked for. So here's what Domino's had to say. Peter Snow was employed with Domino's Pizza as manager from September 95 to January 96 as an assistant manager. As an assistant manager, Peter was responsible for consistent staff operations, daily accounts managing, safety and security, inventory control, and ensuring policy procedures were compl- completed to company standards. Da, 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 da. During his employment with Domino's, we found Peter to be punctual, efficient, and thorough with all tasks that were assigned to him. Peter left Domino's Pizza to pursue other career interests in January of 96. We wish him all the best in his future endeavors. Should you have any further questions, and the phone number is listed there. And then this is, remember Kmart? I used to work for Kmart. And so Maxine Nosh said, Peter Snow has been employed by Kmart Bridgewater since December 97. During this time, Peter has proven to be a valuable worker. Peter was hired during our busy season and needed very little training. Peter was efficient on cash as well as our service desk where refunds are taken and all all aspects of customer service are dealt with. Peter is very professional in his mannerism and I believe will be an asset to any business or organization. If you have further questions, please contact and the phone number. And then I think the most important one that I ever had came from the pastor that I worked with at Kingsway Assembly in Kentville. The unfortunate thing is that Wanda and I moved to Kentville, Nova Scotia to be the youth pastor there. We moved there in January of 96. And in January of 97, the senior pastor resigned. The way it works in our denomination is that when the senior pastor resigns, all of the support staff have to resign along with him. So I had to resign Uh, only a year after I had started there. And so Finley Burt, Pastor Finley Burt, wrote this letter. I'd like to introduce you, Peter Snow, to you, whom I've known for one and a half years. He's been working with me as a youth pastor during that time. I found Peter to be well-balanced with a winning personality, very professional in his field, also very talented. Peter has been extensively involved in our church in music, preaching, and teaching. I would highly recommend him in either of the above ministries. Peter has been allowed to sit on a board in business meetings and has been asked to do pulpit supply during the transition period between pastors he's been involved with some visitation also he seems to get along with the adults i'm glad he said that as well as the youth i'm very satisfied he's done a successful job with our youth and i don't read those i don't tell them to you to boast in any way but what i'm trying to get the point i'm trying to get across to you is what a recommendation what a reference does for a person because you can go to someone and say, I'm like this and like this and like this, and you would want to you know, kind of lift up or expand upon what someone else might think of you. It was at the men's retreat this past weekend, and uh, just a wonderful time, Friday and Saturday up at uh, OVPC, 
and they had a fishing contest. And so after the fishing contest was finished, uh, they were kind of joking around saying, you know, this is on the honor system. You know, sometimes fish stories are I caught one that's that big and it ends up being that big and the hands go out wide. And so having a letter of recommendation tells somebody that this is just not your opinion of you, but that someone else shares that opinion. When people or families would partner together for various reasons in the first century culture of 2 Corinthians. If they were unfamiliar with one another, they would often seek recommendations, either verbal ones or written ones, from those who were familiar with them. And so if a person was traveling on a long journey, and if they were a stranger in a foreign land, it was wise for him or her to carry with them letters of recommendation so that they could easily pass from one area to another, from one country to another, from one city to another, in order to eat or to sleep, to rest, in order to help themselves as they continue on the journey. In fact, this practice is still going on today in some Middle Eastern countries. If a person is making a border crossing, the border guard, the person at the checkpoint, they will ask and say, where are your papers? Where are your papers? And that's not just a passport or a birth certificate, but it would include also letters of recommendation from wherever that person is coming from and whoever knew that person from wherever they were. And so another example of importance is in the social system of the ancient world was when a slave or a servant was purchased for the purpose of being freed. When this happened, his freedom or her freedom meant that they would become free and once again an independent citizen in the city where they were living. As you know, slaves, they had very little. They couldn't own land. Their, their, their rights, their freedoms were, were very limited. They could not make contracts, whether verbal or written. They, they could not build a house. They could not vote. Um, they were not even allowed to speak in public places unless their master allowed them to or unless they were spoken to first. And so for a slave, after their freedom had been purchased, in order to properly introduce themselves back into society as an independent citizen, the former slave would announce this new status by placing a stone in the center of the marketplace. And that stone would signify that they were now free. People would see this person erecting this stone. It would let people around know that there was a change in this person's status from being a slave to being free. And it would act, because not many people knew how to write or read or write back then, it would act as a letter of recommendation. This new position would allow that person now to purchase property. This new position would allow them to make contracts. It would allow them to converse with other citizens. It would allow them to build, to vote, to speak publicly before being spoken to. It would completely change their status. This rock, this stone was their letter of recommendation. It provided a way of introduction into life once again. And I can almost imagine how excited a former slave who had been purchased, who had been freed. I imagine how he would have felt once his freedom had been purchased and and he was in the process of erecting his recommendation stone. So Just picture him. He's carrying it into the middle of the marketplace and he realizes as soon as he places this stone down, everybody around will see that he's no longer a slave but that he has been changed. He's been transformed and that now he is free. And I believe that this is the spirit of the letter that Paul is writing to the Corinthian church. And I believe it is the spirit of what Jesus Christ, what the Word of God, 
wants to say to us today. These are the types of letters of recommendation, either written, like I read to you, or symbolic, like the former slave would come and lay a stone in the middle of the marketplace. Paul was talking about that in verses 2 and 3 when he said, You are our epistles, written in our hearts, known and read by all men. Clearly you are an epistle of Christ, ministered by us, written not with ink, but by the Spirit of the living God. Not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of flesh. That is of the heart. See, letters of recommendation do a lot for us when we're looking for a job. A, a stone of recommendation did a lot for the slaves once they were purchased and made free. But the letter of recommendation that we become on behalf of Jesus Christ becomes so important in our Christian walk. Paul's relationship with the Corinthian church, it, it, it's warm, it's personal, they, they, are, are, they get along well together. In other words, he knows them well and is not afraid to speak to them very openly about what he feels, about what God feels through him. And as a good overseer, he has closely followed their spiritual progress since the first time they received the gospel message. And, and what a wonderful journey that is for any spiritual leader, for anyone that is discipling someone. You see someone accept the Lord, and you realize that they're going to go through some trials and some struggles and some, some conflicts and some challenges. They're going to go through temptation. But as a spiritual leader, as someone who is discipling someone, what a, a privilege and how exciting it is to see someone come along in their faith. Have you ever discipled someone and, and they came from a terrible, horrible background and they accept the Lord and you're helping them along and all of a sudden... They're just serving the Lord with gladness. I think Paul had this wonderful relationship with the Corinthian church. And he makes it very clear to them through our Scripture today that there really is no need for a letter of recommendation concerning their faith. There's no need for a physical letter for them to carry around to say, I'm a Christian, I serve Christ, I'm a follower. He's trying to let them know that there is no need for these types of formalities when it comes to faith because faith is intended to be communicated in a much more meaningful way. I don't walk up to someone and say, here, I'm a Christian, read about it. I come in contact with people and they read my life. And hopefully, by what they hear come out of my mouth, and what they see, my behavior, acting, will be all the recommendation that they will need. And Paul is saying that not on stone, not on paper, but in the hearts of men and women who through their faith, who through their attitude, and attitude is everything. They become living letters of recommendation for all to see, for all to hear, for all to know. You know, I grew up in the Pentecostal church. My parents started bringing me when I was a little baby. I was dedicated in Rosemount Church in Montreal. Pastor Bussey was the pastor that Dedicated me, also the pastor that married Wanda and I. It was kind of neat to go full circle to be dedicated and married by the same pastor. And I grew up seeing and understanding and rubbing shoulders with Christians all my life. And what I've come to understand is that there are times too often as Christians that we gauge our faith on how we look. We gauge our faith sometimes on how we dress, how we sound when we pray in church. Far too often we only concentrate on the outward appearance, the, the things that people see with their eyes. And of course there is a certain amount of merit in looking appropriate, but understand, 
We cannot and must not find our identity by how we look and how we appear before men, how they see us with their eyes. In times past, many Christians identified themselves by what they didn't do. And there was a famous little cliche that used to go around in the Pentecostal church, where I was anyway. I don't smoke, I don't chew, and I don't go with girls that do. That was the common <laughs> Christian word. Cliche to say, here are the things that I don't do as a Christian. And too often... We focus on the things that we're not allowed to do, we're not supposed to do, or or that would look bad too often. I I don't drink. I don't smoke. I don't go to movies. I don't go to dances. I don't wear earrings. I don't wear makeup. I don't wear pants. Only dresses. And therefore, because of all those things, I am a Christian. I don't wear dresses. (laughs) I never wear dresses. <laughs> you can turn the video off for that section. Of the day. <laughs> but speaking on behalf of both men and women, of course, and don't get me wrong, <laughs> I know you already have. <laughs> Folks, it's, it's good to have strong convictions. And there was a dear lady by the name of Mrs. Evelyn Pierce who was Wanda's pastor's wife when she was growing up as a little girl. And you talk about the blessing of being able to disciple someone and take someone under their wing. And when Wanda's mom passed away, Mrs. Pierce came and she stood in Wanda's mom's place in our wedding. And when Wanda was at Bible college, she would send her letters and she would send her sometimes a $20 bill or a check. And she would also include in the letter because Wanda would send her picture. And Mrs. Pierce would say, Wanda, you'd look so much better if you didn't wear that makeup. (laughs) And dear Mrs. Pierce had a good heart. But what we understand is We're not Christians based on how we look. We're not Christians based on a letter of recommendation that we hand on a piece of paper. We are Christians based on what is in our hearts. And whatever is in our hearts is going to come out of our mouths. And whatever is in our hearts is going to come out in our behavior. And all these things that I've spoken about were done in past years to make the outward appearance seem holy. And that was used as our letter of recommendation to try and point people to the Lord. But folks, I really don't think it works. How do I know? Because churches and denominations that have adopted a faith of liturgy Adapted from a book of do's and don'ts. They've either driven everyone away or they've closed or getting ready to close. It doesn't work because it develops a Christian style rather than a Christian faith. How many of us know that styles change? The youth were joking in the office before the service. There's a picture in my office of Wanda and I just after we were married and Wanda has a beautiful green green dress on and I have a shirt with a cardigan. And they're all laughing even now. Dad, did you really wear a cardigan? Where's that cardigan now? I said it burnt in the fire. (laughs) And I think they're kind of happy about that. But you see... Sometimes styles change, which means it causes the way that we look to change. Hairstyles change. Some of us don't have to worry so much about hair. Colleen, (laughs) your hairstyle really changed over the past few weeks. But you see, it's not about how we look, our hair, our clothes, because that's all going to change between now and 10 years from now. We're all going to be wearing a different hairstyle. We're going to be wearing different clothes. 
different styles of clothes. It's what's on the inside that will never change. It's what's on the inside, our faith, that needs to be our letter of recommendation. Those external letters of recommendation just don't get us the job anymore. You know, we can make a person look like a Christian on the outside, but they will never become a Christian until their heart is ministered to and their heart is in it. There's a song that we used to sing a number of years ago, some kind of referred to it as a campfire song if you were on a youth retreat. And the words went like this, they will know we are Christians by our love. They will know we are Christians by our love, by our love. They will know we are Christians by our love, by our love. There's there's more to it, but I forget what the rest (laughs) of it is. But you notice it doesn't say they will know we are Christians by our suits, by our suits. They will know we are Christians by our hair, by our hair. They will... It doesn't say that. They will know we are Christians by our love. And where does our love come from? It comes from our hearts. When we give a letter of recommendation to a place of employment, it's because we want them to want what we have. It's because we want them to know that we will be able to help them in ways they are searching for. They may be interested in what we look like when we go for an initial interview, and I would encourage any young person, if you're going for an interview, dress accordingly. Don't go in a ripped shirt and a ripped jeans, and that won't get you the job. But what they are really looking for, once they look past how you were dressed in the initial interview, they will look for what you can do. They will look for who you are and what you can offer. If a workplace hired me based on the fact that I could type 60 words a minute, was completely fluent in spoken and written French, and have a Bachelor of Commerce degree, if I were to write those things on a resume, okay? I did take a typing course, but I can't type 60 words a minute. Not with two fingers, anyway. (laughs) And... If I told somebody on a resume that I have a Bachelor of Commerce degree in business administration, and if I I put, especially in Quebec, if I were to put on a resume that I was fluent both in spoken and written French, they would look at that resume and say, wow, let's hire you in our finance department where you'll be filling in data forms and sending out letters and, 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 and talking on the phone with our, both our French and English clients. Hey, let's do that. Let's hire Peter. What would happen once I sat at that desk and they put a stack of paperwork and the phone rang and I went to go on the laptop and begin typing? It doesn't matter what I put on a resume if I can't do it. And it doesn't matter how much we say that we are a Christian if we don't live the life. And so, our lives are letters of recommendation to other people, but only if we live it. And I believe it's our mandate to have it not written on our clothing or on our hair, but to have it written on our hearts so that those we rub shoulders with will be influenced by it. When other people see our faith in action through us, they will want what we have. And a difficulty in the church today is that many Christians who go to church and and serve the Lord with gladness, many times how they portray themselves, their letter of recommendation to other people is contrary to their faith. You ever heard of the Sunday Christian? You come to church on Sunday and you worship the Lord and then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday through the week you have a different outlook. You have a different action concerning your faith. And I played hockey with a, a Christian guy from northern New Brunswick. And I wasn't his pastor, but I was a local pastor in the area. He went to the Pentecostal church right in Bathurst and we were just outside. He was the nicest guy. What a wonderful man he was. He owned a 
uh, not, not staples, but he owned like a business type of, um, you know, selling paper, copiers, that kind of stuff. But when he put a hockey stick in his hand, <laughs> oof, he'd swear, he'd slash. I wasn't a referee at the time, otherwise I would have given him a penalty. And I remember sitting on the bench, and it was one of the most disappointing moments playing hockey with those guys. And all the guys knew that I was a minister. I was invited. A lot of guys were Christians. And they were trying to use it as an outreach to invite non-Christians to fellowship together and then invite them to church. And so I'm sitting beside another guy on the bench when this fellow who owned the business store jumped off the bench and went onto the ice. The guy leaned over to me and said, um, that guy go to your church? Because he knew I was a pastor. I said, no, he doesn't go to my church. He goes to the other church. He said, which church does he go to? He said he goes to the Pentecostal church in Bathurst. Okay. Thanks for letting me know. I'll, I'll never go to that church. Not if that's the way that Christians act. And what could I say to him? I just basically had to hang my head and agree with him. You're right. That's not the way Christians act. People should want what we have. People should desire what is in our hearts. People should be reading our lives as a letter of recommendation for the kingdom of God. They should be understanding that what we believe is being transformed into what we say. They should understand and believe that what we believe is being transformed into how we act. Our name as Christians has to be more than just a name. And, and I've heard it said this way that Going to church and calling ourselves a Christian doesn't make us Christian any more than standing in McDonald's makes you a hamburger. <laughs> any more than standing in a garage makes you a mechanic. Or standing in a hospital makes you a doctor. They will know we are Christians by our love. And what we are trained to do in our faith is to love one another. We have to show in our lives what we put on the resume of our hearts. Otherwise, the world will have no use for us. Remember the example I shared with you before? So I'm sitting at the desk. They think I have a bachelor degree in, in commerce. They think that I'm fluent in French and English. And they think that I can type 60 words a minute. And I'm sitting there and they're like, well, Peter, why aren't you working? I've looked over what you've submitted, Peter, and it's terrible. I'm sorry, Peter, but we have no use for you here. And as believers, we need to read the Word of God, have it in our hearts, pray often, have that in our hearts, and as we do that, the love of God will be displayed to all of those around us. And people will say, I want what you have. It's different than what the world is offering. I invite the worship team to come and join me on the platform again. And we're going to come around the table of the Lord. And I believe today on this Pentecost Sunday, that day that we celebrate to commemorate when the 120 were filled to overflowing in the upper room, on that day, Jesus Christ came upon them with such power and fire. And their lives were transformed. They were literally transformed. And the purpose of the baptism in the Holy Spirit is not so that a person can go up and wear it as a badge and say, look, I speak in tongues. I hope you don't do that in your church 
your floor to you. Look, I speak in tongues. That is not what the baptism of the Holy Spirit's for. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is for the enduing of power so that we can be His witnesses, so that we can be His letters of recommendation with tremendous power and effectiveness. And I believe that in the church today, we have lost that desire to be powerful for the kingdom. We have lost that desire to be effective as a letter of recommendation for Jesus Christ. And on this Pentecost Sunday, would you, would you with me symbolically take that stone and bring it to the marketplace of your life, of your community, of your home, of your school, of your workplace, and place it right in front of them and say, look what I've become. This is how I was. But look at me now. Jesus Christ is in my life. The power of the Holy Spirit is on my life. And I want to be able to help you and love you and, and be a friend to you. That's what people need these days. People see so much anger in the world. People see so much brokenness in the world. People see so much dysfunction in the world. And we have an opportunity to be able to share with people about the goodness of Jesus Christ.